Believe it or not, Disneyland is lowering ticket prices, bringing back magic key sales, completely changing downtown Disney, and more on this week's episode of the Disneyland Weekly News. The Disneyland Weekly News, I'm David Vaughn. It's January 2023, week two, and here's what news you may have missed this week. First up, the big changes coming to downtown Disney. La Brea Bakery has permanently closed. After 22 years in the downtown Disney district, the company has decided to close its restaurants and focus on its bakery. However, that spot will remain there for a bit. Earl of Sandwich is coming back and taking over that current location. It'll return with its famous grab and go sandwiches. I really hope they have that holiday turkey, but there'll also be a table service option called Earl of Sandwich Tavern. I'm really excited to see what the tavern is gonna offer. Tavern makes it sound like there's gonna be alcoholic beverages and I'm guessing that spot can have alcoholic beverages because La Brea kind of had like a hidden bar in there that not a lot of people knew about. So my wonder is, are people gonna be able to sit not only eat sandwiches and maybe other items that are only available in the table service option, but then also have drinks at the bar. I don't know. I'm really excited to try it out. Earl of Sandwich coming in with a twist. And though La Brea is sorely missed and we're excited to see Earl of Sandwich come back, it's also important to note that Earl of Sandwich is mostly just kind of like a pop-up restaurant location because in the end, Porto's Bakery is actually going to take over that footprint belonging to La Brea. So what that sounds like to me is that the La Brea spot will likely be torn down and rebuilt as a new building for Portos. I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be multiple stories. That makes a lot of sense to me because you think they're going to need a lot more space for that super popular bakery. I've tried it once before and it was incredibly delicious. I know that it's really popular already in the Buena Park area and I can only imagine that downtown Disney is also going to have pretty extreme lines. So they're going to have to find out a really clever way to be able to get guests to wait. Maybe they'll do some type of virtual queue, but I still think they're going to need some type of line system. We'll see how it works because if they have any plans for people dining there, they're also going to need some dining spaces. So maybe that will be in the upstairs area. I don't know. I'm just guessing here, but we'll see what happens when Portos is announced in the future. And more changes to the downtown Disney district. As I talked about last week, Ralph Brennan's Jazz Kitchen has closed, but it will be renamed to Jazz Kitchen Coastal Grill and Patio when it reopens. I'm guessing it's gonna reopen in the next few weeks as Disney said, so that could be the end of the month or maybe February. Right now it's listed as closed and so is its express window into the future. We don't have a reopening date for those any more. Also closed this week is Disney Home and the Wonderground Gallery. Now both spots are just going to be temporarily closed. They will reopen after they get some refurbishments. Downtown Disney is completely transforming into like a mid-century modern type vibe. So these places have to match that vibe when they reopen. We don't have reopening dates for those just yet, but if you want any home goods, I would head over to World of Disney. They have a lot of the same stuff that you see at Disney Home over there. And also the Wonderground Gallery opened a pop-up location near the Star Wars Trading Post. I love Wonderground Gallery. It has some of the most unique Disney merch that you can find, created by artists that Disney has hired specifically to make this type of merchandise. But I'm excited to see what Wonderground Gallery and Disney Home will look like when they reopen. And now onto a new segment I call Snack of the Week, where I tell you all about the snacks that you should try at the Disneyland Resort. This week is all about one of my favorite snacks of all time, the Rontalus Garden Wrap found in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It's plant-based sausage, spicy kimchi slaw, sweet pickled cucumber, and plant-based spread wrapped in a pita. You can get it at Ronto Roasters in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland Park for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's $13.99. And next up, we talk about the big changes coming to guest experience at the Disneyland Resort. There were some big, huge, really, announcements made this week that were really unexpected, but also very welcome. I think this is going to change how we go to Disneyland. It's also going to make it a much better experience. Sounds like they've been listening to us, and I'm glad that they're finally able to get some of these things done that we've been asking for for a while. So first up, the park hopping rule is changing. If you go to the Disneyland Park and you have a park hopper ticket or a magic key, you have to park hop at 1 p.m., but that's moving up a couple of hours to 11 a.m. starting February 4th. I love this change. I think it's awesome. I think it's a fair compromise. I'm pretty sure that 
Even though I want Disneyland to get rid of this park hopping rule altogether, I understand that they need to have guests make a reservation to one of the parks if they're going to keep the reservation system in place, which is a whole other conversation if they should keep the reservation system in place. But just talking about the park hopping rule right now, this basically gives guests an opportunity to start at one park, maybe ride a couple of attractions, experience some things that they want to experience. Then they decide to go to the other park for like, let's say lunch. A lot of people like to start off at Disneyland, but then they want to go to Disney California Adventure for food. So this makes a lot of sense, especially as we go into the Lunar New Year celebration as well as the upcoming Food and Wine Festival which kicks off in March, a lot of guests are going to want to eat at Disney California Adventure when they see this new lineup come out. It'd also be interesting to see when guests will naturally flow over to the parks. Will a few hours be enough? Will they start to stagger that time out? I'm really curious to see how this will look because right now we see lines going to the parks right at 1 p.m. People eager to get into the other park to park hop. So we'll see how this all plays out. Second up, yes, Disneyland is lowering its ticket prices. This is pretty insane and really unexpected. Basically how it's gonna work is right now, Disneyland's lowest ticket price is called a tier zero. It's $104 to visit one park. So right now there's only a handful of dates at that tier zero price, but Disney did just say that they're gonna have two months worth of dates in 2023 where you can visit the parks for as little as 104 bucks. And considering that some dates cost 70 bucks more than that, this is a pretty good deal. So right now we don't have those dates that are gonna roll out for that $104 pricing. My guess is they'll be in August, September, and November. I'm not expecting to see them in the summer, but it is entirely possible. I'm also not expecting to see them on the weekends at all. I'd be very surprised if we saw weekend dates available at all for 104 bucks. So if you're planning to get one of these tickets, know that you probably will have to go during the week, but I will keep you updated when we have that list. And Disneyland is giving us a freebie starting February 4th. You'll get free ride photo pass downloads for attractions like Space Mountain, Radiator Springs Racers, and more. Right now you can only download those when you have Disney Genie Plus or you have the Believe Key or the Inspire Key. But now they're gonna be available to all guests visiting the Disneyland parks starting February 4th throughout the Disney 100 celebration. I don't know when the celebration ends just yet, but I'm expecting this to go on for several months. And in Magic Key news, Disneyland confirmed that Magic Keys will go back on sale periodically throughout the year. In their statement, they said, the Disneyland Resort will make select Magic Key passes available for new sales from time to time throughout 2023 as pass inventory becomes available. So what that makes it sound like to me is that they're waiting for guests to cancel or not renew their Magic Keys, that is. And then based on that inventory, they might resell those ones that did not get renewed. So that's what my guess is that what happened the last time Magic Keys went on sale briefly in November. We only had about a 36 hour window and it was a surprise drop, meaning Disneyland didn't tell us ahead of time when Magic Keys were gonna run sale. We only really had a couple hours because news media outlets were given this information. It was dropped. I told all my followers, hey, go get Magic Keys if you need them right now. So if you wanna get updated when Magic Keys go on sale, because it could be another surprise drop, make sure you follow me on my social media channels on Instagram and TikTok. I post a link below in the description because I will not be surprised if it is just another 36 hour window or maybe even less. Now that people know it's urgent when you go get those Magic Keys, they might not last for more than a few hours. And the Disney California Adventure Lunar New Year 2023 foodie guide has dropped. The festival will take place from January 20th through February 15th, and like other Disney California Adventure food festivals, it'll have several booths set up around the park where you can try different snacks and drinks. New this year is this quesabiria egg roll, pork and shrimp wontons, pepperoni pizza bow, and there'll also be a dumpling cart in downtown Disney. A sip and saver pass with six tabs will also be available to purchase. We don't have pricing on that just yet, but I do plan to cover the Lunar New Year food, so make sure you stay tuned for updates. And I wanna know, out of all of these changes that I just told you about, what are you most excited about? Is it the earlier park hopping rule, Porto's coming to downtown Disney, or are you just excited to try some of the food at the Lunar New Year? Tell me in the comments below, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps us grow. Again, I'm David Vaughn for the Disneyland Weekly News, and I'll see you next week week.